Welcome to Yellowstone National Park in winter. I'm standing here right across from Old Faithful, one of the most iconic landmarks and maybe maybe the signature landmark of not just this park, but our entire national park system. Um, and look, I'm standing here along the boardwalk that surrounds Old Faithful. You can see some of the benches here. In fact, some of the benches are right below me here buried in snow. But just a quick scan around here, there is no one here. And this geyser should be erupting sometime in the next 10 to 20 minutes or so. Uh, just a fascinating and cool time to be here at Yellowstone in the winter. It is about three degrees, so that obviously keeps a lot of people uh, from visiting this time of year. But uh, I'm excited to be here with you uh, on this beautiful winter day to explain a little bit more about not just this geyser, but why we get so many geysers. This is part of the upper geyser basin, then there's the midway geyser basin, the lower geyser basin. Why we see these hydrothermal areas somewhat concentrated in parts of the park. Why aren't they spread out sort of randomly? Why are they sort of clustered in certain areas? Um, and this is actually Yellowstone National Park does have the greatest uh, concentration of geysers in the world is right here at Upper Geyser Basin. You can see uh, the steam rising from various points here, hot springs, geysers, fumaroles here in the Upper Geyser Basin. Um, it's pretty close to, although we can't see it from here, we have a river that flows through here, the Firehole River, uh, which drains the area off to the west. Um, and this basin sits in kind of a low area. We can see uh, the ridge here uh, going up towards Mallard Lake, looking to the north. Uh, and then as we come across here, more or less looking to the south through the, just past the lodge here, there's another ridge here uh, to the south that's kind of high. And that's going to factor in to our discussion here of why we have all these geysers clustered in this area. Now, Old Faithful uh, has its classic name, Old Faithful, but it's really a bit of a misnomer because it's, it's really anything but faithful. And when you look at geysers, most geysers are pretty erratic in terms of how often they erupt. Um, Old Faithful used to erupt hourly, and now the intervals between eruptions is closer to 90 minutes or so. So it's a little bit longer. And um, these geysers, you know, the time interval, how much water they erupt, and the height at which they erupt varies quite a bit. And one thing that can play a role in changing the eruptive frequency and style of a geyser is earthquakes. So sometimes we get earthquakes that actually seal up the uh, vents and the plumbing system beneath the, the geyser. Sometimes we um, that actually opens things up and makes it maybe erupt more frequently. So there's a lot that can change. But while we're waiting Old Faithful to erupt, let me take you down here to a diagram I have and we'll uh, explore why we have all these geysers in this area here. And if, if it starts to erupt, we'll pause and and take a look at it. It looks like it's pushing up a little bit more steam right now. So it might be priming and charging. Well, it certainly is priming and charging and getting ready to erupt. So I've drawn a simple cross section here from south to north. Here's Old Faithful here. Um, and of course we have heat from the hot rocks beneath the Yellowstone region. Um, again, another misnomer is there's a huge magma chamber down here. And there is, but most of this is actually crystallized. We've done uh, geo, uh, different geophysical studies have shown that much of the magma that's beneath Yellowstone is actually crystallized. So it's not even eruptible magma, the type of magma that might erupt. Um, but let's look at the way this, this geyser basin sits in this basin. So to the north, we have these rhyolite lava flows that have filled in the Yellowstone caldera since its last big eruption about 640,000 years ago. So we have a 164,000 year old Mallard Lake rhyolite flow. And again, that's the, the ridge we can see here uh, just past Old Faithful looking to the north. And to the south, we have another rhyolite lava flow, about 124,000 year old, the Summit Lake rhyolite flow. And these rhyolite flows are thick. They're not like the lava flows you would see in Hawaii or Iceland where they're runny uh, and glowing red. These would have been much much more slow moving and, and thick and pasty. And then as we kind of get in here a little bit closer, uh, what you can see is the valley is underlain by glacial sand and gravel. So really these two lava flows ended or stopped 
their terminus is right here. And in the intervening space between these lava flows, we have gravels and sands from mainly glaciers, but maybe also rivers as well, that have filled in this area. And these materials are much more permeable. They allow the water to travel through them much more easily than the, the rhyolite flows themselves. And so these become good conduits and pathways for this hot water that's being heated up um, well above this magma chamber to rise to the surface. This is essentially why we have um, these, all these geysers and hydrothermal features in the upper geyser basin as well as other geyser basins in Yellowstone is we have these very permeable rocks here. So at depth we actually have an older rhyolite flow, the Biscuit Basin flow, a little over 500,000 years old. Again another rhyolite flow that's filled in the caldera. And then I've got the, the plumbing system, just cartoon drawing of the plumbing system for Old Faithful. Its height uh, is about 140 feet, that's a good average height. And then as the water uh, blows off into steam and some of that water falls back to the ground, uh, that water that's cooled deposits a silica-rich material called sinter. It's also sometimes called geyserite or siliceous sinter. Um, but we also can see here that the, the temperatures that these geysers can reach, the water, can reach well over 400 degrees Fahrenheit, 200 degrees Celsius, because the pressure of the water um, keeps it from boiling uh, until a very, very high temperature and then ultimately uh, it erupts at some point and then it recharges water infiltrates back into the plumbing system and causes uh, the geyser to erupt again so this is hopefully a helpful little cross section and an explanation of why we see um, these geyser basins in the locations we do why are there no geysers you know up on the ridge here up uh up towards Mallard Lake or to my south, why, why are these hydrothermal features mainly concentrated in these specific areas? And it has a lot to do uh, with the subsurface geology. So it looks like Old Faithful might be getting ready to erupt. Um, I'll go ahead and shut down this section of the, the video, but when it starts erupting here in a few minutes, uh, I'll fire the camera back up and, and give you a nice little glimpse of, of Old Faithful in winter. And again, if you've been here in the summer, uh, maybe the most amazing and uh, astounding thing right now is looking down the boardwalk towards uh, the Old Faithful Inn and noticing that there is not at this present time one soul <laughs> around me. And yet in the summertime there would be literally hundreds, maybe a few thousand people uh, just kind of packed in here ready to watch it erupt. So. We'll go ahead and uh, conclude this section, but be ready for the next one when uh, hopefully I can catch some footage of it erupting. Thanks for joining me. All right, looks like it's just beginning to erupt now. Um, it's maybe about eight or nine minutes past the last video segment. We can see the initial sort of plume of steam is that superheated water driven by the expansion of the gas as it flashes into steam. Uh, jets the water upward. A little hard to see the water with the, the gray background. But you can hear kind of the jet kind of sound and the water rushing upwards. Some of it splashing back down in the foreground there. And again, a little hard on this day and with the visibility to see the height, but uh, usually pushes that column of water up. I can see it right about here. I can see the water is separating from the steam. About 100, 140 feet or so, maybe, uh, what would that be? Maybe like 35 or so meters, maybe a little bit more. And Old Faithful is a cone geyser. A little hard to see with all the steam, but there's a bit of a cone vent uh, at the summit there. And so that's a kind of geyser that forms when we get a constriction in the plumbing system near the top. That's what actually jets the water upward. And then as that water falls back down around the vent, it uh, precipitates the silica that that water holds in solution and builds up the mineral coating there. And you can see kind of the mound uh, that surrounds the, the area around Old Faithful. We also have uh, a smaller little mound over here, and I don't know much about it, but that's obviously got to be uh, an older vent or geyser that was erupting at some point. And again, just to um, reiterate just how special it is here in the winter, 
Um, in the summertime, you'd be elbow to elbow with all sorts of people from all over the place. And if I look down the boardwalk here, it looks like I've got uh, six friends that are also enjoying uh, this eruption on this cold winter morning. So pretty spectacular, uh, Old Faithful in eruption. Hopefully you enjoyed learning a little bit about the Upper Geyser Basin, Old Faithful, why we see the concentration of geysers and other hydrothermal features in this area. Um, I'll do another video here in a few minutes, uh, walking around the geyser basin, showing you different types of hydrothermal features and uh, maybe some, some of the uh, different uh, features that they produce. And so, Appreciate you joining me for this. Uh, hopefully you enjoy the channel. Uh, be sure to like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you again sometime. Signing off from Yellowstone National Park in the wintertime.